Greetings, folks. Today on my bench, I have, well, something different. A Citizen Caliber 8942 Digi Anna from 1982, also referred to by common folk as the Jet Boy or the Robot Face. This is an eBay donor watch, which I had to buy in order to source one single part for another watch I've been working on, and which this video is really about. I have to say, of all the donor watches I've purchased before, this one is by far in the worst condition I've ever seen. It's a good thing the part I need is deep inside the watch, because by the looks of it, this thing is 99% unusable. In addition, it has enough human DNA on it to clone an entire nation. I should have probably worn a hazmat suit when handling this unit. I've tried to find music for this video that more closely suits the watch I'm working on. You know, digital watch, digital music. All the dirt inside this watch is making it difficult to lift the movement out of the case. This thing is disgusting. The first step in the disassembly process is the removal of the LC display panel supporter, which is held in place by six clips. With each part that comes off of this movement, I'm convinced that this is a Franken watch. Someone has definitely worked on this before because many parts here don't match. For example, the reflecting plate on this particular model should have been a golden color to match the case, the chapter ring and LCD panel. Additionally, I've never seen a chunk of the reflecting plate missing as you see here. I don't know how that's even possible without someone, perhaps, cutting it? Weird. Where's the rest of it? The logic board is attached to the supporter plate by five tiny screws.
Once the logic board is removed, the analog movement of the watch is exposed. This is the part which I need to source out of this watch, a stinking tiny stator rotor. The one in my watch has a broken bottom pivot and needs to be replaced. Looking at the disassembled movement under the microscope, we see how filthy it is. Here is the stator rotor I had just removed moments earlier. and the jewel on the wheel train bridge. For the cleaning cycle, due to its delicate nature, I placed the stator rotor in a separate basket to protect it from bumping into other parts and risking damage to the pivots.
And here is the train bridge jewel after the cleaning cycle. The main plate jewel. and the stator rotor. Now we can hope to have a working watch. I peg all pivot holes one more time to ensure that no dirt remains. Lastly, I remove any remnants of pegwood with Rodico. For the analog movement reassembly, I refer to Citizen's Technical Service Guide for the 894X series movement. Replacement of the stator rotor is the trickiest part of this whole operation. Not only is it just a couple of millimeters in size, its pivots are a fraction of the thickness of a human hair, which can cause them to snap off under the slightest pressure. In addition, they are also magnetized. This takes a lot of patience and delicate work. There is a method of doing this correctly, and I cannot film the positioning of the pivots in the jewel holes, because it's simply impossible. I use a 20x loop with my face about an inch away from the movement. Basically, you first have to make sure that all the wheel pivots are seated in the holes of the main plate. Then attach the wheel train bridge and tighten the screws but not all the way. 
just enough to prevent it from moving around, but also so that you can move the stator rotor pivots into the jewel holes, while exerting slight pressure from the top of the wheel chain bridge, so you feel the pivots snap into place. Here I'm just making things more difficult for myself. The coil should be attached last, as it will be in the way of manipulating the stator order into place. This screw is placed here temporarily to help prevent the train bridge from moving while I position the rotor into place. It is one of the screws which secured the logic board and has to be removed after the analog movement is complete and before the logic board is reattached. Mobius 9010 all around. I should also point out that the amount of oil required for this movement is minimal. The tiny motor and small electric current does not have enough power to battle thick amounts of oil. This is the watch which I am trying to repair. I don't refer to this as a restoration because I don't have sufficient amount of new parts to properly restore this watch. I've restored three in the past already and simply ran out of supplies. For this watch I still need to source a new LCD panel and someday I'd like to find a new case. This case was replated but I didn't do a very good job prepping it. and we repeat the entire disassembly process again.
I removed the broken analog movement and replaced it with the one I had just cleaned and assembled. These hands are a total mess. Since I have two sets, I might as well work on both, in case one of these watches ever lands on my bench again in the future. The factory loom is old and cracked, the chrome coating is completely scratched and unfit for use. I dipped them in acetone to loosen up the old loom.
these watches came in four different color combinations, and the white dial model had black hands. Airbrush time.
Once the paint dries, I apply the fresh loom. I realize that my plunger is off-center here. Due to a very limited amount of space while filming this, I could not get a proper view. From my vantage point, everything looked perfect. Imagine the shock when I saw the footage. I had corrected this later on.
An overwhelming majority of these watches are missing the battery strap. I've recreated one in Adobe Illustrator to have it cut later on a laser cutter. This is a temporary bracelet. I have a new one on the way, but that's another four weeks away. I think we're done here folks, I'll continue my quest for a new LCD panel, but until then this will do. For now, this white version of the Jet Boy can join my collection of its fully restored brothers. Thanks for watching, until the next time, take care. Bah, 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 bah.